Okay. So I was going through one of my favorite book. I have read it many times, uh, the Bhagavad Gita. And I was thinking I can share some of the verses that I'm finding very useful at this time. So the Bhagavad Gita is a very interesting book. In, so first of all, the setting uh, is incredible, right? The Arjuna represents somebody like a normal person and Krishna represents somebody who is a higher being. And, uh, and Arjuna is facing a very challenging situation. Arguably, that is challenging as it gets, right? He has to fight a battle that he didn't choose. He doesn't want to fight it, but just the circumstances build up so that he has to fight this battle, right? And he has to fight this battle against the people uh, he truly loves. And he knows they are good people. His teacher, uh, people like his parents, uh, people who are like his parents. And, and these people he really love, And then... He knows they are also not one to fight, but just the circumstances are such that uh, that he, they are in a opposite side, right? And the battle is almost ready, right? So he lost his courage, and Krishna is giving him uh, the discourse and uh, in a way advising him, giving him the knowledge uh, to make him ready to fight. And uh, he pretty much covered all the aspects uh, that one can imagine. And it's quite condensed. <laughs> it's quite condensed. So I'm going to just share the ones which strike to me when I was reading right now. Uh, this, so this is a chapter 2. And uh, yep, so Arjun was kind of lost his courage and now Krishna starts talking. He talks some other stuff and then he says, uh, you know Arjuna, you have to learn, first of all you have to learn to stay equanimous uh, when you are feeling pleasure or pain. Right? When you're feeling this sensation of pleasure or pain, learn to be equanimous. And the person who uh, is capable of being equanimous is ready for liberation. Right? And the logic he gives is these sense pleasures, right? especially the pleasure which is coming from the contact of senses. Right? You taste something, it tastes nice, or uh, you, know, you hear something, it, uh, or you see. So this kind of uh, sense-related uh, uh, contact it creates a very pleasant or unpleasant sensation you should learn to actually be equanimous in front of those sensations right because they are very momentary right they come and they go and they are like very mo it, it is a kind of a happiness but it's a very lower kind of happiness right so he was uh, suggesting like uh, un learn to master it at least don't be somebody who is uh, reactive without his choice right when you want to do it you can do it but in general you should have a capacity right you should at least have a capacity to choose whether you want to engage in this or not it shouldn't be like uh, when a sensation comes you have no choice but to react right i find it incredible advice and then um, another good advice uh, i found is uh, he's saying that um, it's not exactly the same way but what he's saying is you have to be very resolute in your uh, uh, goal or in your path right you have to be resolute I, and the reasoning he was giving is the people who is not resolute their intellect is branched out in so many different directions right your mind will be thinking about all the things on the other hand if you are resolute about one thing uh, your intellect will be directed in that thing and that way you gain the strength right so i found it incredibly true right when you are sure when you're clear when you know what you are looking for your mind is centered and your mind is directed in that direction here they are going to advise uh, you should be focused on enlightenment but whatever it is that uh, 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 advice hold true right whatever it, uh, you want to target on you want to be resolute about that otherwise uh, uh, it's a weak, it's a weakness. Then a classic, <laughs> then a very classic uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita verse. You have a right to action, but you don't have a right to the fruit of that action. Right? So don't think yourself as a cause of that, uh, that fruit. And at the same time, don't get uh, attached to inaction. Right? It's incredible. It's a... Uh, uh, <laughs> It's a very classic uh, verse. 
so what he's saying is basically you have the right you have the right over the agency of action right so you can decide whatever you want to act right you have complete control over that you can act in any way you want you want to fight you can fight you don't want to fight you can you know in the Arjuna case you don't want to fight you don't want to fight you want to fight you want to fight you are in control of your own action but the result or the fruit that is going to come out of that action is not in your hand right there's so many different causes right so what does it mean that fruit what is fruit first of all right fruit one is in external circumstances right for example in the case of Arjuna he's fighting but there's absolutely whether he's going to fight or not his action will not determine whether he is going to win or not or what will be the result of this whole fight right so he doesn't have a control over the fruit of it he can control his action but he doesn't have a control over the fruit of that action the same way right we can start something we can get into uh, some venture or we can decide you know um, to go in a certain direction but it doesn't guarantee anything right <laughs> so that externally you don't have control in terms of the fruit of that action even I would say internally you don't have so much control over the fruit of that action right I might have done something um, um, that I was conditioned to do right I have done I might uh, uh, act on a desire right I might have act on but I do not know how my mind will react once I, you know, uh, once that action happens, right, my mind end up maybe judging myself, right, what the fuck, <laughs> why would you, why, who will do something like this, right, maybe my mind will have some act, some different kind of uh, thoughts, right, now I have done this, which I should do, this. so even in the internal structure of thoughts and emotion, you don't have so much control there, they are pretty much automatic in some ways, so your action does not really guarantee like this will produce peace this will produce happiness this will produce satisfaction you don't there's no guarantee like that right so the advice he's giving is you you don't think yourself the cause of all the action don't own all the fruits of whatever fruits come comes but don't uh, you know own the fruit don't uh, you know focus too much there focus on your action which you have control over at the same time he pointed out that you should never be attached to inaction that i think also is incredible advice right you you first of all you cannot he's going to get this uh, going to get to it further anyway but what he's saying is you, you basically cannot be uh, inactive you're always acting so no, never get into this uh, trap of like i will stop acting you will have to act right so control your action where you have control actually uh, beautiful and then he also says something like uh, uh, once you once your intellect crosses uh, the forest of uh, delusion then you will lose any interest in anything that even you haven't heard about you just lose interest in all of this once you uh, cross the delusion the forest of delusion uh, interesting <laughs> then Arjuna asked him like okay so you're giving me all these advices but uh, tell me like how does this people who who are like this who are what you are saying right who are centered when their pleasure, pleasure or pain is coming and who are like you know strongly resolute about what they are doing and then who are focused on the who are not so much concerned about the fruit of their action all these things but well how does this person looks like right what is his quality how do you like how how do you how do they look like and what do they do so Krishna replies again the big answer the ones I love so Krishna reply when a person renounce all of the desire that comes from the all of the sense desires that comes from the mind once a person renounces all of those that kind of a person is contented in his uh, self here I think the self means awareness so he's saying like uh, that kind of a person is uh, satisfied in himself right and that satisfaction is much higher grade of happiness as compared to this pain and pleasure kind of happiness 
and that kind of a person is called Sthitpraki. I found it incredibly uh, incredible advice. And while so that person, while normal person try to you know try to distance himself from the object uh, that uh, you know uh, that he is attached to, whatever it is, also there might be an alcoholic who is attached to alcohol, or uh, there may be foodie who is attached to food, or maybe anything, right? So there may be a winner who is attached to winning, or whatever. So anyone, so people who even know like this is not good for me, but he's trying to you know uh, renounce these kind of things. There is still this uh, desire. Uh, they are renouncing, but there is still this in, inner desire there, right? That uh, that is there, right? I want to have it. Mm -hmm. I want to have it, kind of a desire. But he's saying once you taste these kind of things, right? The contentment of uh, being in self and uh, uh, these kind of a higher happiness, these other kind of desires just dissolve. Right, these uh, lower desires just dissolves. So that's another one I found interesting. And here is the one I really, really love. Right, he's explaining how this whole cycle of desire is uh, works, a cycle of desire works. Right. So he's saying, when you think about an object of sense, it could be any object. Right. When you're thinking about the object of sense, um, from that thinking comes a small craving. Right. And from that craving very soon turn into a desire and that desire turn into a anger and from that anger you lose the uh, you become deluded right and in that delusion your intellect you lose the memory your you lose the intellect uh, any kind of sensible uh, you know direction and from there you just uh, fall right amazingly done right from a, a small thought about a, a desire a small thought about an object of sense that soon become a desire from that desire it soon become like a um, uh, the object a small sorry a small a thought of an object of sense soon turns into a craving and that craving turns into a desire that desire turns into an anger from that anger you just get deluded and from that delusion you cannot think straight and then you lose your memory and you basically fall you basically fall right so that's uh, that's very useful. Yeah, so that's uh, that's the second chapter. There's, I think everybody gets a, a different. Uh, you know, the, 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 he covers pretty much all the things that you uh, many things that are very 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 useful. But these are the things I found. Uh, uh, strike with me while I was reading this time so I thought I should I should share